Hey guys, and today I have a door. Yes, a door, but it is a special door. You can see that it's not a normal door. And when I click this button, it opens up and I can go inside and I can close it and I cannot walk back out. I get stopped halfway through, but when it opens, I can go through it and close it again. Uh, and this flashlight is a flashlight shader I went over before. Anyways, so this door is essentially a very simple way to have rotation uh rotationally and directionally de independent doors so i'm rotating it by 10.0 degrees every tick that this button activates the command block and then it hits a maximum and it stops so i can easily control and this is negative so it's doing negative so that's why it's closing so i can easily change this to control the speed that the door opens so you can see it's very slow and i have to click it multiple times um, or I can just have like a set value and just do it once and it goes to 250 degrees f further than what it is. Uh, and this is very useful for maps. Uh, you can easily control the speed just as so. If you want it instantaneous, then you can just set it to 900, which is the max. That would be instantaneous. Uh, you, it also can work in any direction. So I can place a command block like so. Uh, and I can put it like this, and it'll put the door like that. And uh, what do you know? It works with the same nomenclature of plus and minus 10 degrees. Put it like this, plus 10 degrees, minus 10 degrees. Put it like this, plus 10 degrees, minus 10 degrees. Okay, and you could do one door at a time. I'm just making it do all of them. Uh, it also has left hinges, so it does for both hinging. So you can do double doors if you want. And all of the logic remains the same plus x degrees, click a button, run a, run a function, set, set a degree amount and run a function, and it'll do it. Uh, now, some of the things that you can change, you can make the, stain, the glass inside here, stained glass, remove the texture. Uh, one of the weaknesses though, is that if I go ahead and put the, if I put a block here, the door will turn black. So you're going to need to uh, change the texture of a block of glass or stained glass to the block you want and then place it or use a uh, transparent block. So I think piston, nope, cauldron. There's like a number of blocks that are transparent and you can just retexture them perfectly fine for a map where you already need a texture pack for the door itself. Uh, now the way that this works, so let me go ahead and remove this annoying shader. Uh, time set day. So the way that this can work is uh, if I go into spectator mode, we have an armor stand and the door is aligned such that it is always to the left of the armor stand. Uh, what that means is that when the armor stand turns its body by any amount, it will rotate the door by the same amount plus 90 degrees so that it's face if it's facing the player, then the door is shut. Okay, so this does run into the problem of the whole thing turning black you can turn it on fire and make it marker but then you can see through the door if it's off of your screen but it works pretty well like that um or you can use the transparency block but in turn in kind of uh, your payoff for having that issue with doors is you can make the door any texture you want you can do whatever you want the uh it's a door that you can walk inside the block with it and then get stopped by a glass pane that you cannot see uh, which allows you to uh, make the door seem pretty realistic. Uh, you can add kind of like a handle that you right click and it'll open, that's all on you. Uh, and then you also have a super lightweight, uh, low function count way to do every rotation. So this is basically eight combinations of ways you can put the door down and it works for all of them using one function, uh, which is pretty sweet. So I was going to do kind of a quick P. This still qualifies as a quick P, but it, the only way I can make it quick is if I don't actually sit here and code it with you because there is a lot going on. I actually legitimately recorded uh, for 40 minutes and realized this is not a quick P and I'm flubbing on some stuff anyways. I don't want to put this out. So I decided to just, I'm going to make a version that you can download in the description. It will be a zip file that has both the resource pack required that has bare essentials of just the door and a data pack that has just bare essentials of just the door functions. And you can move them around and change the naming uh, conventions and the functions and what they call. Uh, and uh, 
you can you know adapt it to your own so that'll be kind of the uh, do-it-yourself aspect of this quick p as in you trying to adapt it to your own code um, but this is a very cool kind of thing i i created here and i wanted to share it with you guys because it's very useful so i'll go over how it works just so that you know just so that i can say that i'm kind of going over everything uh, i'm going to zoom in quite a bit but uh, hopefully this is good enough for you guys on your screens of whatever kind you're using so you're going to need a setup for the left and right you'll need one for every single door that you add to the game but it, you only use one model so if i was using like a spruce door then i would need to do another function just so that i could change the custom model data number and change the tag here uh so if it's a right hinged door it has a tag of right if it's a left hinged door it has a tag of left and it doesn't change what model it has it only uses one model and we both run to the same setup function we just need to know whether or not a door is hinged right. So in the setup function, we summon an area effect cloud. This is going to be useful for placing the stained glass because again, you want this thing to be rotation invariant, which means that if the door is facing this way or this way or this way, it will not affect the way that your code operates. Uh, and because of that, we're going to need some way to remember the starting place of the door because as you saw with the blackened armor stand, the armor stand isn't technically inside the block that the door occupies. So if you try to set the block where the armor stands at, you'll end up just setting this block. So we need to have a marker area effect cloud that has a door ID, which is a fake score that we use to link the two together. We make the door ID the same for the armor stand as for the area effect cloud, and we remove the init tag from the area effect cloud and the init tag from the armor stand. Okay, and then we go ahead and set up the armor stand. So the armor stand will face your the nearest player's feet when they place the command block down to start it, spawn it in. It will face you, and uh, then if it is a left hinge door, it will face you, but 180 degrees turned around. So that's how the hinge ends up on the other side because the door turns around. Uh, which will come into some issues later because if the door is turned around, then it will open outwards when it should be opening inwards. So we'll have to fix that. Then it runs a 4D snap, which means four directional snap, which essentially just says if I'm facing like uh, this degrees, it'll snap me to face that angle. So it's like the nearest, it snaps you to the nearest 90 degree rotation. Uh, and that function is as simple as four commands that say if you're between these rotations, TP this way between these TP that way, between these TP that way, between these TP that way. Okay, it's a very, very basic function, but it's actually really useful. So you'll have that function too. All right, so we need to save the rotation that the door is at, and we need to save the rotation that it started at that we'll never touch, which is the door rotation base, which helps me kind of figure out what is the maximum rotation the door is allowed to rotate and so on and so forth. Then it does a caret in a local TP, which will work for if the door is facing frontwards or backwards, and it's just values found because those are good for the model. And it's invariant, aka uh, invariant to rotation because it's carrots. So it works for wherever the door is facing. It will always put it in the correct setup. You'll also notice that the door kind of extends past the block it's in. That's kind of purposeful so that, that it can hide the stained glass and it fits nicely into some kind of a frame but you might notice that it's like maybe one pixel beyond the block. And that's just to help ease fitting the door properly in two places. Okay, so that's all the setup. So we create an area, an area effect cloud that's linked to the armor stand via uh, a scoreboard. That way we don't have any issues with sort equals nearest. Then we rotate the armor stand to face you and we save what rotations it's at. And that's then you come into the one function kind of thing. So for every armor stand, you just run the same rotate function and you set the in math score to a rotation amount that you want. So what does rotate do? This is kind of the magic behind it all. So the rotation gets the base rotation. So where you started and it adds 90 degrees to it. If you're a right door, it adds negative 90 degrees to it. If you're a left door. So right doors are going to be able to at most rotate from here to here left doors at most will be able to rotate from here to here simple so that kind of will be used later to figure out if you're uh, where where the max the final ending point is so then you have diff p so diff p is your previous rotational difference so this is your invariant rotation so we're going to be grabbing this invariant and hopefully if you don't know what this word is you'll get familiar with it invariant means it's uh, not dependent on 
rotation, essentially. It's a fancy math word. Maybe I'm using it wrong. Who cares? Uh, you get the point. So we're grabbing the diff P, and the diff P is just your rotation minus your base rotation. So if I'm at this zero degrees, and then my real rotation that I'm at is 45 and my base was zero, then 45 minus zero is zero. But if I'm at 90 and my base was 90 and now I'm at 135, 135 minus 90 is 45. So you'll always have the same range of zero to 90. And we want this diff P and diff value to have a range of zero to 90, depending on where the door is rotated. So we add math, the in value, we add the rotation uh, to your door rotation, or we subtract it if you're a left door because left doors do things oppositely. And then we set the diff, which is going to be the uh, new invariant rotation value equal to whatever this added or subtracted thing was. And we subtract the base to make it invariant. So now we have, uh, so we have basically diff P is going to be where I'm at minus where I start, where I start from. And uh, diff is going to be where I'm going to go to minus where I'm at, where I start from which will be important for determining if the door is supposed to open or close. And then if you're left, we need to inverse the diff value and uh, inverse the diff P value, because again, you're working in all these negatives and we want these to be zero to 90 scale. So this just inverts the scale. So it's uh, instead of negative 90 to the zero, it's 90 to zero. So if your difference score is above 90 degrees, which means you've rotated, your, you're going to rotate yourself more than 90 degrees, then your rotation that you go to that you will end up going to will equal the max so you'll just lerp to the max and if you are below zero so you're going to rotate past the zero degree point so out of the range then your door will be the base your rotation will be the base and then it stores the rotation onto your rotation so that it actually updates the way that the door is rotated and then we have a uh the open and close criteria so this is where we need diff p so if in your cur where you're at before you rotate, if that value is less than 44.9, so basically any the, the below 45 degrees, and if the rotation you're going to is above 45 degrees, then you open the door. Does this make sense? So if the door is like, if we're here, uh, let's say if the door is like, uh, it's actually easier with demonstration. So let's go ahead and close this. So let's make this 10. Okay, so let's get ourselves close to it. So we're pretty close. So if the door is like this, and then when I click the button, it then the next rotation it ends up at is above 45 degrees, then we go ahead and remove the stained glass. So it's not quite above 45, now it will be. So it removes the stained glass. And then the logic is just opposite. So if you were above 45 and now you're going to be below 45, then you close it. And this can be fixed. You can make this look a little bit better if you just, uh, if you're within a certain range of 45, you just jump. So that might be something you want to do. Uh, open and close, I just set up, broke off into separate functions because uh, it will reduce command count uh, by pretty much two commands, um, one command. But you set the search door ID equal to your door ID. And then you go to all area effect clouds that are door origins. And you check if their door ID is equal to the search door ID. And if it is, then you set it to air. If it is, then you set it to glass. So this is just uh, entity searching based on if they have the same score. I've done this a lot of times. Uh, and that's it. So that's all the functions. Uh, maybe that was a little confusing to you guys with the whole invariant math stuff. But the point is that you want to grab whatever rotation you're at and get it within a scale of 0 to 90. So then you can... Uh, basically ignore the effects of door being facing a different direction which allows you to do this stuff make all the doors work the same way um obviously there's some glitches because it's a model so sometimes the door might not end up in the fully closed position because it's a model so you might want to like always force it to over rotate that would help uh but yeah so uh, this is hopefully you guys like this resource um adapting it to your own you'll just need to change the namespaces and maybe the scoreboards if you want to do that. Um, but uh, hopefully you guys are able to implement this into your own world and add your own method for opening and closing the doors as you will. Uh, anyways, that's pretty much all I got for you today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.